right, guys. Nasa it again. Today is shave number 281. We are now in the 280s. How about that? We're going to put it in this number 77. It's the open comb, and it's a vintage Gillette, and so you can pretty much gamble that it's going to be a, a new, and we do that in all caps, Gillette new. There's all kinds of Gillette news. There's the Gillette, Gillette new uh, long comb, short comb. Um, uh, Big Fellow is a new. There's a new improved. Uh, there's a new standard. And if you look at the side view here, bottom is not completely flat. It has a raised flat area. So this is called the raised flat bottom new RFB for short. And the number for this one is the 77. It has been replated and you can kind of see that by a little bit of rounding off of some of the corners. Not quite as crisp and squared off as, as from the normal manufacturer. But it's very pretty, huh? The soap we'll be using is Mystic Water Irish Traveler. It's a green Irish tweed, green Irish tweed uh, dupe. And this finest badger brush is from Macedo. I've had it soaking for a few minutes. I'm going to put it back in the water. Because this guy has a lot of backbone. I've only used him a few times and I got him at a good deal from somebody who didn't like all the backbone. But I thought, you know what? I love my Macedo brushes. I have two other ones that are 24 millimeter. They are a finest badger, like that one, just smaller. And then a silver tip. And they're both great. The finest that's a 24 millimeter has a lot less, uh, a lot less stiffness and a lot less backbone than this brush here because this one just has so much width to it. It's built in to have a lot of backbone. All right. The same scent in a different company. Sterling, Sharp Dressed Man. Another green Irish tweed dupe. And you'll find that's just such a popular fragrance. You've definitely seen it on my own channel. Um, that a lot of makers have a Green Irish Tweed clone. I know Razor Rock does. Um, yep, WSP does. Of course, Sterling does with the Sharp Dressed Man. Um, a lot of companies, uh, a lot of companies do. All right, so before I get my hands wet and giving my face a little bit of a douse of water. I'll show you my 280. See, there's three groups of 10. 250 was the start before I started this little tab area here. So 30 plus 50 is 280. And then here is the NASA in question. Now this guy is unique. Um, He's a three-piece, but he's different. Um, a lot of the older three-pieces have a permanent connection between the base plate here and the handle. And so this knob here will actually come out. The top cap will come right out. So this one actually has a little bit of a, uh, has a little ring in there to act as a holder, which is nice because you don't have to worry about it falling out. And as you can see, the top cap has a much longer bolt than usual. And there we go. You can see the ridge there to hold the blade in place. I'm going to put the dots toward the handle. Just what I've been doing with this blade. And for safety's sake, I'm just kind of lower it on there. And there we go. Now the disadvantage to this kind of razor is if you like this head a lot, you're not going to be able to move the head to other handles. Um, you know, it's just the way it goes. Uh, however, a lot of these handles, I think, probably stick around a lot because you're clamping. You are binding from here all the way to here. And so it's just a nice, tight little um, single unit. Pretty strong.
instead of just a head screwed onto a handle. All right. So here is the Irish Traveler. Get my face wet. About 24 hours of growth on my beard today. Hard water here. Now, I'm going to come at it as my usual method by shaking most of the water out. And this helps me to measure the amount of water I use to have it be predictable later on. All right. Let us load for uh, 30 seconds. 45 just started around. So we'll go to 15. Now it was actually 47. So we'll go to 17. This is pretty firm br bristles. So it's possible that if you've measured your time with a smaller brush or a softer bristled brush, then this guy is going to gather up soap a little quicker. So you might need a reduced time frame. But we're just going to do it a bunch anyway. I'm almost there and there. And I can feel the stiffness of these bristles, that's for sure. And we got a lot of uh, stuff coming over the edge, and that's okay. Just rinse it off. I do it, I rinse the sides of the tub upside down so that I don't really get water on the insides. Now, here is where mystic water needs to be treated a little differently than other soaps, most other soaps. I'm not going to add any water for a little bit. I'm just going to take the brush and work what we have until it looks like everything's, uh, the water that was inside the knot as we loaded the soap. I need to try to work that into the lather, into the soap, before we start adding. Secret with this soap, if, it, if you add water too quickly, then it will just bubble up and it'll take you forever to beat it down with a lot of mixing. And so, as you can see, we are, you know, we have the, the creamy little proto lather going there. I haven't used this brush too many times. I think just three times for me. And normally I do add water, um, like a teaspoon at a time. But with this guy, I'm going to start it off with just a half. A lot of people have gripes about Mystic Water. It's because they came at it, uh, in many cases, they came at it with a, a brush that had too much water in it. That kind of thing. You've got to work it for a little bit before you start adding water. And then, after that point, you're fine. This is a stubby brush. I don't really enjoy the stubby type handle. It's thick, but there's not really a whole lot to grab onto when it gets slippery. So today's theme in the Lather Games, 2020 Lather Games, we are almost in the middle of. Today's theme is a soap scent that will get you lucky, to phrase it in a PG way. And so I chose one of the scents that my wife likes. She doesn't like a whole lot. She likes Sharp Dressed Man from Sterling. She likes the Green Irish Tweed scents. And so now we are building leather very nicely. Don't have to worry about adding water too fast now. I think I added five teaspoons to one batch that I did. I just went ahead and put two teaspoons in. So I've got that early kind of lather going here and so it should be just fine. 
man, I can feel the strength, the backbone in these bristles. Not going to be much splaying on my face today. Feels like the kind of knot that I can just abuse, you know, work really hard, press down really hard. Possible I could cut away this handle, put it in a, another handle with um, a little shallower setting so that it has more loft. Might work. We are still. Look at the structure here. It's easily able to hold its shape. Mystic Water is a very nice soap base, kind of a small company. And she does other, okay, so that is four teaspoons now. She does other types of products as well, you know, probably like, like shampoos or bath soaps, you know, that, things like that. And uh, she also has a very nice sample program, kind of like Sterling. You don't get as much as Sterling, but you get a pretty good chunk, bigger than a lot of other sample companies. And I think maybe you order like 10 bucks, 9 bucks, 8 bucks, something like that, and you get to choose three different samples. And you can order kind of three at a time. And I did that and had a lot of fun trying some of the soaps out. Now, um, if you like strong scents, and it may be a little difficult to find one that you really enjoy in, in her collection. A lot of hers are on the, the medium and the lightly scented side. Good news for some people, bad news for others. I tried several from her, so now that is six. I tried several from, from her. And of the the uh, some that I really enjoyed, I liked about half of them, but most of them were just too weak to really, uh, really get and, and and be able to have it kind of around me and smell it really good during the shave. It was just uh, so light that I just had to put my nose in the bowl to get the scent. All right. So let's pull up this lather and see what we have. Oh, now there's some elasticity. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's make sure we just get a good mix with this, and I think we'll try it. I did remember today to wear a non-white colored shirt, and you can see probably my face and the area around me is a lot brighter because it's, the camera's not having to balance, uh, accommodate for that brightness. Yeah, that lather looks terrific. Now more water on my face. I can feel that stubble. Now, I believe I tried this razor out, and I think uh, it didn't do great with this old blade, but just try it anyway. All right. Yeah, so not very much splaying going on here. Just kind of the, the tips. And something I've voiced on my channel before Let's say I was a face lather. I mean, look what's happening. See, there's no room in the brush for the lather. It's so dense. Now, one thing that a lot of guys do is they will overload the soap and they'll get a lot of soap concentrate inside the brush. And so maybe that's what you have to do to, to get something of this density to work for you. Now, uh, you don't have to have a big old thick amount, and so I did reach down and get a little bit more, but I'm going to work this in. Also, you can do kind of a twisty thing like this to get some of the lather out. We need to work it into our skin for two or three minutes. 
Soften the beard. You know, there is a lot of backbone here, but the tips are very soft. And so it's not scritchy, scratchy, or any of those types of words. Very comfortable. It just, you know, shoves you a little bit. I don't know if the knot is going to change too much over time. If I can get some of these edge bristles here to, to splay over, leaving room for some of these center ones to, to start to move out. Maybe I can get it to relax enough to where I enjoy it can keep it around. All right, there we go. Definitely not a thick layer here because this is just not a brush that lays down a, a thick layer. All right. Kind of almost more lather on the hand than on the face. There's a small nimble razor with this kind of thin handle. And this handle does look a lot like the 40s style super speed. In a way it looks uh, like the Ranger Tech because the 40s style super speed has this band right here that is knurled, but the Ranger Tech does not. All right, let's just see how things go. Kind of tuggy, but not in a painful way. Do not have a lot of glide. It is being kind of slow. I don't think that's the soap's fault. I just think it's the stubble. I bet it'll change a lot in the is after this one sticking with the grain for the most part and a little rinse now this is a pretty wet lather I'm not getting a whole lot of scent from this one but as you know I wasn't really able to put a lot on my face because of the density of this brush. It's almost like mixing lather with a stick. But you know what? Uh, it's good to try different things, show you guys, tell you what happens if you have a brush that's really quite uh, dense and stiff. Tips very soft because they've been treated with a bleach kind of solution. Maybe it's just bleach. Now I felt a lot of stubble after that first pass. Oh see now there's the glide. Now the soap is starting to be able to work much different. As always, a loose, light grip on the razor. I'm gripping it toward the center so that the head can move around if it needs to. Pretty quick pass there. And rinse. Rinses without too much drama because it is a really wet lather. Load her up again. So Mystic Water is a really nice soap base. Very slick. If you like lighter scents, I would definitely look through her long list. She's kind of like Sterling in the number of scents that she has. I mean, 
it's 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 quite a lot. And so what I did was I um, made a like a word doc or something, and I put all the different scent names, copied and pasted, and then I pasted the in the descriptions, the little blurb for each one, so I'd have it all in one place. And then I started moving those around in the document. I'd have one section that was no, not interested. Another one that was maybe. Uh, another one that was very interesting. Or you could use color systems where you use the highlight feature of the word processing software to maybe highlight green with ones that were really interesting, red with ones that were a nah, you know, that sort of thing. And then you end up with a list of ones to try. Takes a while. But worth your time, like I said, if you're one who likes lighter scents, because this is a soap base, it's going to give you very good performance. As you can see, the soap holds water really well. And then you can choose whether you want it to be a really wet performance lather or if you want to kind of keep it kind of luxurious and keep it with a little bit more viscosity and density to it and rinse I've got good glide now because we took off the, the big forest on the first pass and now the fourth pass so we doubled up on the with the grain as pass one and two and then we did a cross grain just now for pass number three. With the younger blade, I would be able to easily do it in three or three passes. But this uh, blade is old, and this razor is not really quite built to handle in the right geometry this old blade. My Fatigue Grande does it in three passes, even with this old blade. All right, I'm going to do the cross grain again. Oh, see, nice and slick. You can puff your cheeks out, get a little closer shave. This is a razor, unlike the three pieces where the head comes off. This is a razor that has some insides to it. And those can get gunky if you get scum, soap scum, and hair in there. Gillette, from what I understand, never put any oil in their razors. It didn't seem like they recommended that. And that might be a good idea because then you, the oil doesn't catch on to anything. Uh, soap, hair that goes into the center part can be rinsed away. Now you've got definitely got plenty of shavers out there uh, who take some mineral oil perhaps and put it down in the uh, workings of Fat Boys and this kind of razor as well. You know, for that very reason, because maybe it squeaks as you tighten it. But uh, just don't wanted to let you know that, as far as I can tell, Gillette never advised or shipped any razors with an oiled center area. I'm just going to do a little touch-up right there. And look, we've done four and a half passes, and we've still got plenty of lather. So that 30 seconds was lots of soap relatively speaking. Now I'm going to switch directions. Most of the time you saw me go this way and I'm going to do cross grain but from the other direction this time. A little bit of skin pulling now since this is the most stubborn area. This is a gorgeous little razor. You do get blade feel with most of the soap and comb news. Pretty good. And 
so you're not going to want to buy these if you're looking for the smoothest of shaves. All right. At least if you have skin like me. All right, let's do a full rinse. Well, despite the fact that there's some blade feel associated with this razor, it didn't really give me a super close uh, cut right here. It's kind of a general 5 o'clock shadow look uh, to it. However, I still feel that your average job, you're not going to have a problem with it at all. And I just wanted to go ahead and use this uh, beautiful little dude during the lather games. He is made in England. I wanted to mention that. Over here is the Gillette Diamond shaped logo. And then right there it says made in England. All right. Take a look at this lather. Yeah, I might be interested in trying to use this guy as a face lather where I started with some concentrate. Sometimes it's super frustrating because as you're adding water, stuff just flying off. I mean, if you watch my channel very much, you may have seen me do that. Here is the Mystic Water. Again, just a terrific. We just have so many good soaps available to us. These days, the uh, viscosity here resists my squeezing just a little bit. It's just, but it's very hydrated. You do see some micro bubbles and things like that, but it doesn't feel airy at all. And we can uh, squeeze and look how the weight of the water makes it just drop like that. So we've got nice hydration. How is the contact slickness? Very light and soapy. So this is a performance lather. You know, uh, uh, straight razor shavers, this is probably the type of lather they're going to want to try to get. You can back off on the water and get a little bit more in terms of a, a luxury feel to it. It's, it's a little bit light right now to be called luxury, but I pumped a lot of water into it. Did I say six? I think six teaspoons of water. I know I did more than four. Wonderful wet lather. Also, if you use lathers like this that are just really wet, you have a greatly reduced possibility of stray lather getting caught up in the in inner workings of your razor and not getting out. A nice wet lather is going to easily rinse away. At least that seems logical to me. The blade tabs, you know, do come out a little bit. There are a few people around in the shaving world that apparently are given grief about the blade tabs and are apparently injured or at least scraped a little bit. And so uh, here's what the top cap looks like. I'm sorry, the bot base plate, the top of the base plate. Here's what it looks like uh, without the top cap on it. I'm sure if I yanked on this really hard, it would come out, you know, if you really needed to clean it. And it is, uh, it is hollow. All right, well, like I said, this brush, the tips are very, very soft. But as you can see, they're not really moving very much. And so it is a very different feel than some of the brushes I've used recently in the lather games. This is probably my stiffest brush. I'm going to give it some uses and see how the knot behaves. But I may just have to pass this on to somebody else because I like the other kind so much better. Clean that up even more after I take a break in just a little while. So, six teaspoons of water in um, used in a lather that has been loaded for 30 seconds with a stiff, stiff badger brush. So those are my stats there, and it gave me a, a wet, wet lather. On the wet side of perfect, yeah, performance lather. Might have been a little outside the perfect zone in terms of wetness. It just depends on your your own needs. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, we've got this uh, Sterling 
sharp dressed man. Go ahead and get my face up wet again. I need a little bit of a buffer. The sterling stuff can be kind of strong for me. Definitely don't want to just throw this on dry skin. You know, it, my skin can handle it. If I wait a couple hours, a little bit of stinging over here. So maybe there was a little bit of razor burn, but it's gone now. Green, a green scent. Cary Grant, Clint Eastwood, Prince Charles, I think. We're fans of the Green Irish Tweed. I can see why. It's fresh. It's grassy. It's got some energy. Energy to it. Some zest. Definitely some zest to it. Some people think it's overused. Kind of like a Ventus. Uh, and I can see why. But I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Very good. Uh, Sterling aftershades are very popular. Um, and I think this is an area where my skin has a little bit of sensitivity. I don't know whether it's the fragrance oils or the alcohol content, but I am feeling a little bit of a kind of a burn uh, irritation due to the, that I did not feel until I put the aftershave on. And that's, it has happened to me on a regular basis with Sterling. I normally put some witch hazel on uh, right before it and that calms everything down. So this is what happens when I don't. I kind of ran out of the witch hazel. So um, here in the bathroom, I think I have some more in my office. So I'm gonna make sure I bring that, bring that in here uh, for the future. All right. So yesterday's theme in the lather games, I believe was dupes. And so that's when I used my Sterling Mountain Man, which is a dupe of the uh, Creed Silver Mountain Water. And uh, I really like that one too. It is uh, doesn't have too, doesn't have too much in terms of woods, but it has um, crystal clear, uh, zesty, clean uh, type of uh, type of scent. Uh, got some energy to it, and uh, and so if you want to read up about what uh, the duplicates um, inspired uh, scents that were used, then find yesterday's Lather Games thread. On the wet shaving sub, pardon me, I got some bubbles in there. Uh, on the wet shaving subreddit, you can look for yesterday's uh, thread. And so today's thread, of course, is going to have information about the um, uh, the theme for today, which was uh, kind of you know stuff that's going to get you lucky. Uh, Mickey Lee panty dropper, obvious choice. Um, they are a company who shut down a little while ago. Um, but that, I bet that's going to make a, uh, it's going to surface during this month. Um, uh, and there are all kinds of, you know what I bet won't happen? <laughs> At least not in sincerity. Midnight Stag from Chiseled Face, right? I don't think there's too many ladies that are going to be drawn to that one. Um, so uh, if you want, if you're interested in some of the shaving products that a lot of us are using that might be in the kind of romantic, uh, category, uh, attracting ladies and that sort of thing, then uh, then read up on today's thread. And uh, that might be some interesting stuff, uh, some educational stuff uh, for you. Yesterday, while it was Duke Day, the side challenge, the special daily challenge, the surprise challenge, you don't know about it until that very day, was to format your post in a style I like uh, Rudd's shaves on YouTube, and so I did that. I used Sterling yesterday, and so I went and found his Sterling review, copied that, and kind of worked with it a little bit. And so you uh, you might see some of those uh, type format posts if you look at yesterday's thread. All right, well, today is the, what, the 10th, uh, day 10 of the Lather Games, and uh, and it's done. So, hey, I hope you got something from this video. hope there's something in here to help you out. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. You take care. Good night.